He's a good out to teach you anything. And then may you be encouraged as you walk with the Lord, as you follow Christ, but as you deny yourself, glory to God, take up your cross, amen, and follow him daily. Amen. Our scripture reading tonight will come from the Gospel according to Luke, the eighth chapter, the Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Praise God. Both will read in the New King James Version. Tonight, I want to deal with this subject, amen, how to discern demonic activity. Praise God. How to discern demonic activity. Luke chapter 8, beginning in verse 25 through 39. Mark chapter 1, verse 21 through 30, 27, 21 through 27. This we'll read, amen, in the New King James Version. There's one or two other places we're going to go, but that'll be it for, amen, tonight. Amen. Luke chapter 8, verse 25 through 39, we'll read in the New King James Version of the Bible first. And that will that, that's where we'll start tonight. Amen. I'm, I'm excited about what the Lord is doing. Amen. I'm excited about what the Lord is doing. Luke chapter 8, verse 25, 25, yeah, 26, I'm sorry, verse 26 through 39. It said, then they sailed to the country of the Gadareans, amen, which is opposite of Galilee. Amen. And when they had, when he had stepped out of uh, on the land, there met him a certain man from the city, amen, who had demons for a long time, and he wore no clothes, nor did he live in a house, but in but in tombs. And when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and and with a loud voice, amen, said. What have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for it had, it had often seized him and, had, and was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he broke the bounds, the bonds. And was driven by the demon into the wilderness. Driven by the demon into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, what is your name? And he said, a man legion, because a man many demons had entered him. He said, my name is legion, because many. A man uh, legion is in and around 5,000 Roman soldiers. A man 5,000. Because many demons had entered him. Verse 31. And they begged him that he would not command them, amen, to go out into the abyss, amen. They did not want to be disembodied, amen, and go out and fizzle out and have no activity in the earth realm, into the abyss. Praise God. Now, a herd of many swine was feeding on the, on the mountain. So they begged him. Praise God. That's the second time we see the word they begged. They begged him, amen that he would permit, that he would permit them to enter, amen, enter them, and he permitted them. Then the demons went out of the man into the swine, and the herd ran violently down the steep, praise God, uh, steep place into the lake and drowned. So they ultimately still was disembodied. And when those who fed them saw what happened, amen, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went, they went out, amen, to see what had happened. And they came to Jesus and found him, amen, found the man from whom the demon had departed, sitting at, amen, the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, amen, and they were afraid. And they also, they also who had seen it, amen, told them by what means he had been uh, demon possessed was healed. Amen. He told them by what means he who had been demon possessed was healed. Glory to God was delivered. Then the whole multitude of the surrounding regions of the Gadareans, amen, asked him to depart from them for they were seized with great fear. Glory to God. Amen. And he got into the boat and returned. Amen. Returned that is to Galilee. Now the man who had the demons Amen. Had the and who had departed begged him that he might be with him. Amen. He wanted to go with Jesus, but Jesus sent him away, saying, "Return to your own town. Tell what great things God has done for you. Praise God. 
And he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done for him. Praise the name of the Lord. The things that Jesus had done for him. Mark chapter 1 then, then verse 21 through 27. Thank you, Father. Praise God. Mark chapter 1. Thank you, Father. Verse 21 through 27. Then he went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and taught. And they, and they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. Look at God. Now, there was a man in their, in their synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to torment us? Amen. I know who you are. Amen. The Holy One of God. I know who you are. You're the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him, the man that was in, amen, he cried out with a loud voice and came out him, out of him. The demon came out of him with a loud voice. He cried with a loud voice. Verse 27, Then they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, amen, who is, what is this, and what new doctrine, amen, is this? For with authority he commands even unclean spirits, and they obey him. Glory to God. Amen. He commands unclean spirits, and they obey him. Amen. How to discern. That word discern means to recognize. It means to distinguish. It means, in another word, that is the synonym to identify, to be able to separate or tell the difference. Amen. Say it again. It means to recognize, to be able to distinguish to identify, to separate, amen, to separate difference, glory to God, and amen, to make, amen, is made obvious, amen. When we learn to dis discern demonic activity, praise God, we separate the activity of the Holy Spirit, amen, uh, and we learn the activity of demonic spirit, amen. The first thing that I, I have to say, and that this is going to bless your spirit, is that the closer that the believer gets to God, amen, through fasting and through prayer, amen, the more we become aware of the powers of darkness. The more that we fast and pray and become closer, amen, to God through Christ Jesus, the more we, amen, we become uh, and draw near to him, the more alert we become, the more discerning we become, Amen. And we'll become increasingly aware that there is another unseen audience that we entertain that is, amen, aware and afraid of your progress. Amen. That's aware and afraid of your progress. Amen. Dwelling in, in, in his holy presence, in the holy presence of the Almighty, amen, causes the believer to become more sensitive to the spirit realm. Amen. Dwelling in the holy presence of the Almighty, amen, it causes the believer to become more sensitive to the spirit realm, amen. When we dwell in his presence and his isness and his holiness, it's that, it's, it's that, it's that soul washing and cleansing effect that causes us, amen, as we continue in prayer to discern glory to God because once we're in his presence, we become keenly aware of that's God. Anything else that comes after that, we have to discern and understand that they meant that's not the movement of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. That's not the movement of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this is important as well. Spiritual warfare will be very minimal in the believer's life. Amen. If we cannot hear, if we don't have spiritual eyes. Amen. It becomes min very minimal if we don't have and here's another word, amen, fundamental spiritual understanding. If we don't have fundamental spiritual understanding, we'll do very little in warfare, and we're incapable of doing very little. We've got to be able to, even in the midst of battle, hear the commands from the control tower because we are not under absolute authority. We are under delegated authority. We walk in Christ. Glory to God. We walk in Christ. And the more you grow in Christ, the bigger your light, 
the bigger, the greater your level of submission, the more sensitive you're hearing, amen, the more you're in tune with the word of God, the more dangerous you become, amen. And uh, after a while, glory to God, you can't help, amen. The enemy can no longer uh, afford to ignore you. The enemy no, can no longer afford to ignore you. And Luke 8, praise God, this is, a, this is one of the points I'm going to make tonight. I know I'm not going to get done with all of this. But in Luke 8, amen, it says that when Jesus, when they sailed to the country of the Gadareans, amen, which is opposite of Galilee, when he stepped out of the, amen, out on land, when he's out of the boat on land, that met him a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time. Let's stop right there for a minute. As soon as he stepped on land, there met him a demon, amen, from the certain, a certain man, didn't say what his name was, but he's had these demons over 5,000 for a long time, amen. If you want to know what place in the spiritual realm, what level of you have, what level of authority you possess, just walk down the street and see what meets you. Praise God. Just, just, just find one of those places where you know it'll make, it don't have to look poor. Glory to God. Just, amen, start to walk around the block. Glory to God. Even in your neighborhood. Amen. And, amen, uh, walk in those places where you see people walking all night. Amen. And see what meets you. That is an indicator of your level of spiritual authority. You don't have to call their name. Just do as Jesus did. Amen. Just as soon as you hit that territory, whatever's the strongest in that region is going to meet you. That's an indicator, amen, of your level of a submission to God and your level of authority in Christ. Amen. Because you don't have to call out demons. They meet you. Glory to God. They manifest when you're in that realm. I say again, when you want to discover your level of spiritual authority, just walk outside. Just Take a block, amen, just, uh, or find one of those areas that you see people walking at night and all of that, because we're going to talk more about that. Glory to God. Whatever the strongest demon is in that area, they will eventually find you. You don't have to go far either. Praise God. That's an indicator, amen. That's a, the level of, this, that's the way to discern demonic activity. If you walk in authority, demons will meet you. I've been walking in stores and seeing demons Amen, staring me down, looking at me like we know who you are. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. My identity is there in Christ. In Christ. Glory to God. And so uh, we understand the level of authority we have by our position in Christ. Let's look at this so we can gather some discerning activities of demons. Praise God. Out of Luke 8, we find out, number one, that they recognize the authority of Christ. Amen. Number two, in the same sentence in verse 27, and wore no clothes. Amen. When you see running around naked, no clothes on, or have clothes, amen, highly possible it's demonic activity. Nor, amen, lived in the house, the homeless, in the, amen, but in the tombs, in a very weird and awkward location, you know that's, amen, that's a demon. Praise God. And when he saw Jesus, when he saw Jesus, he cried out. He fell down before him. That's a position of worship. And with the loud voice, he said, what have you to do, amen, what have I to do with you, amen, Jesus, son of the most high God, amen, what have I to do with you, Jesus, amen, uh, son of the most high God. Demons knew before Christ, amen, was born in a human suit, they knew his positions in the heavens, amen. I said this to a brethren today, amen. I asked him the question, how is it that demons know who Christ is and men are still grappling with who Christ is, amen. The next word is out of, his, of, out of the demon's mouth is, I beg you, amen, do not, do not torment me, amen. I beg you. As three times he begged, amen. He begged in, in, in verse, at the end of verse 28, he begged, amen, uh, not to send them into the abyss in the beginning of verse 31. In verse 32, he begged him to permit them to, amen, to go into the swine. Amen. That's a lot of begging. 
That's a lot of begging. But that is an indicator of the authority, amen, and the ability of Christ that they already knew, amen. But the human suit that he was in, amen, did not deter them. They still knew exactly who he was. Even, amen, amen, even in fleshly form, even in the incarnate Christ, taking up on flesh, they knew exactly what he was, who he was, and they begged him. Amen. Praise God. Let's keep going. Verse 29, for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for it had often seized him, and he was kept under guard, bound with chains and shackles, but he broke amen, the bonds, and was driven by the demons into the wilderness. So you see two things there, amen. Number one, you see an unusual level of strength, amen. That's, 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 a, that's a demons, those that are demon-possessed have this unusual level of strength. Because of how many demons he had, even the chains and the shackles, he broke. Glory to God. And demons drive Amen. The man away from people into the wilderness, drove them into the wilderness, often seized him. Amen. Very violent behavior. That's the spirit of destruction. Praise God. Amen. And so through this passage, we discover the activities of demons, but yet we also ex discover the authority of Christ in their submission to the authority of Christ. Amen. Jesus asked them a question. What's your name? He made him talk to him. Then he made him be quiet. Glory to God. He says, amen, we're legion because many demons had entered him. And they begged him that he would not command them to go out into the abyss. They begged they, they man, him not to uh, cause them to go out into the abyss. They did not want to be disembodied. And the only way that demonic activity can have their full manifestation, it has to commandeer. It has to illegally possess, amen, uh, a human body to carry out their de evil deeds, amen, that, amen. If it's going to manifest to its full extent, they have to possess a human body to actually physically carry out their, amen, their assignment. Glory to God, amen. And so we, uh, we discern this activity through the passage in Luke 8, in Luke 8, very vivid, very clear, uh, very pronounced uh, um, understanding of what, amen, how demons operate. Let's look at, let's look at verse 32 and understand that, that, that uh, now a herd of many swines was feeding uh, there on the mountain. So they begged him, as another one, they begged him, amen, to be permitted to enter them. They begged him and he permitted. So that lets us know if they wanted to go there, that in demonic activity, it is very possible for demons to possess animals. Amen. You see some in these elephants and dogs and things that go crazy. It's possible for, de amen, uh, for them to possess animals, according to the scripture. But Jesus had a trick for them. Amen. So they went into the swine, but the swine went crazy because of the demons, went down to, amen, the steep, mount, amen, steep place, and they drowned in the lake, and they were disembodied anyway. So, so Jesus' punishment for them was accomplished anyway by way of or via the swine. Now, the swine was a way for to get the herdsmen attention so that, amen, the fame of Christ could even go abroad in the Gadareans. Amen. And the other thing, the reason why Jesus didn't let this man uh, who had the legion, the man's name was not legion, the man, they say a certain man, didn't say his name, but Legion was the name of the, the spokesman that spoke up for them, for the man who had the demons in him. The demon's name was Legion. Amen. They, they, man, the one that was speaking said, our name, we're all together, we are Legion. Amen. The man's name was not Legion. He said, they just called him a certain man. Praise God. And so that's what you, that's what you discover, and that's what you see. Amen. Mark chapter, uh, Chapter one said, "Amen. This de this demon wasn't now out in the field. This demon was in the synagogue. This demon was at church when it's time that Amen to have church. Now there was a man in the synagogue with an unclean spirit. Amen. And when he saw Jesus again, he cried out, 
saying, let us alone. What have you to do? What have we to do? Amen. So that's another indicator that there's more than one. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You're the Holy One of God. And again, it's a language. Amen. Sounds uh, like submissive language. It's a feared language. Amen. It's the still a language where they recognize the authority of the person of Christ. But Jesus rebuked him. Amen. Made him be quiet and then made him come out. Praise God. Amen. He rebuked him. Be quiet. And, and amen. And this gives us, amen, warfare language. Amen. Come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him, there it is again, the same statement. He convulsed him, he, a same, same pattern. He cried out with a loud voice and came out of him. Glory to God. And they all were amazed so that they, so that they questioned among themselves, what is this? What new doctrine is this? With, with, or with authority, he commands even unclean spirits and they obey him. Glory to God. Amen. So this uh, activity can be tracked in the scripture. And this is where we learn from. This is where we glean from. And this is why you're at one of the many reasons, of the many reasons, but this is a, it's another one on the top, why your adversary don't want you to read your word because and then you become empowered. You become educated in regard to who you are in Christ, the level of power we possess when we fast and pray, amen, and the level of submission they come to when those that are filled with the power of Christ, amen, show up. Glory to God. The enemy does not want you to be equipped with that kind of understanding, with that kind of knowledge. Glory to God. Amen. And so we have to get that. That's, there are some things and there's some demons, there's some activity that would not be dealt with unless we spend time in fasting and prayer. That's why when you start fasting and praying, you get all, you get all kinds of demonic antenna stand up because they've had thousands of years to recognize how the hand of God moves when men turn over the plate and it's sincere. Amen. They've had thousands of years to recognize what happens and how heaven interacts with the, with, with, with the, amen, the earth realm when they turn over their plate and start seeking God. So the enemy is not going to just sit around and let you fast and gather all of this strength and gather all this revelation, gather all this discernment, gather all this spiritual equipment Amen. Just watch you fast and amen and hope and plead that you don't come after them. No, sir. No, man. They're going to do their absolute best to stop you and to distract you, to deceive you from that process. Glory to God. You've got to know that in your spirit. Praise God. In 1 Timothy, this is my last place, chapter 4, 1 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 1 through 5, amen, in the uh, New, New King James Version, 1 Timothy, chapter 4. Verse 1 through 5, first in the New King James Version. He says, amen, now the Spirit expressly says, or the Spirit says very clearly, speaks clearly to, to us, that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith. In the latter times, amen, some will depart from this faith. So he's speaking of an apostate generation. Men, amen, they will apart, depart from the faith. Amen. The cause of them departing is they're giving heed to deceiving spirits. Giving heed to deceiving spirits. Amen. If they're departing from the faith, there's a reason why. They're giving heed to deceiving spirits. So we're living in a time of deception. Glory to God. Amen. And deception is, is getting bigger because of social media. We have involved ourselves in this thing. Amen. And now we become uh, man, more susceptible, susceptible to be deceived, amen, because we tend to listen to everything, amen, and not hear the Holy Ghost say, shut that down. Glory to God, amen. They will depart, they will leave, they will, amen, uh, turn away from the true faith, glory to God, and follow after, amen, give heed to, listen to, amen, deceiving spirits, amen, deception, and doctrines of demons and doctrines of demons, amen, and teachings that come from demons, amen. Demons can teach, amen. Demons can teach. Demons want to commandeer, amen, a human vessel, and then, then they can spew out their foolishness, and many are deceived from doctrine or demons that teach, 
Amen. But discernment, but discernment, having the discerning spirit to be able to tell who's talking. Amen. Where is this coming from? Whose master is this? Amen. Then we'll be able to understand, to discern that's not of God. Amen. Beloved, don't believe every spirit. Don't believe, don't give heed to every spirit. Amen. For all the spirit is not of God. Amen. Those that deny that Jesus has come in the flesh is the Antichrist. Amen. And many Antichrists have already in the world. But those that believe that Jesus came in the flesh, amen, is of God. Glory to God. So there are many deceptive spirits that have gone out. Fasting and prayer puts you, amen, in a very discerning mode. Amen. You can discern and, amen, and get vexed very quickly when you hear demons parading and speaking as though they're, amen, from God. I'm going to say again, when you spend time in the presence of God and fasting in prayer and, it's, and you've embraced holiness, you get vexed very quickly when you, amen, hear in your spiritual clean, holy ear, the foulness that's coming from, amen, a demonic mouth that is uh, commandeered a human body, amen. You, you, you're able to discern, to tell the difference. you be able to know, amen, uh, listen, that, that thing there is not God, amen. And then that, that voice you don't give heed to, you flee, amen. You flee. We don't have no right to try to justify all demonic teaching. Amen. God will do the separating. Praise God. You just take care of your little corner. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hey, so there's, amen, these are deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, demons that teach, speaking lies in hypocrisy. That term speaking lies, amen, in hypocrisy, it literally means, amen, these people are hypocrites and liars and their conscience are dead. Amen. They once were, now they are not. They were with us. They were among us. They feigned like it was us, but they departed from us that it may be made known that they were not of us. We discern. Amen. The, amen. The more you spend time in the presence of God in prayer, studying the cleansing of his word, there's a cleansing effect that comes with knowing the truth. Amen. His holy glory is washing through you. You become very discerning in the spirit to know what you're dealing with. Glory to God. And the reason why the body of Christ, amen, can be, uh, as, as, as some, unfortunately, in some cases, easily deceived because the lack of prayer, the lack of time in the word of God, amen, and you'll just gobble up whatever's put on your plate. You'll just gobble up and whatever you put on the plate, amen. Typically, you put something on my plate, I smell it first. Glory to God. If it's from a strange plate, I smell it first. I look into it first, to pick in and look at what is this, amen, because I'm never that hungry that I don't have discernment. Say it again, bogus, amen. I'm never that hungry where I don't have, amen, discernment to slow down. Glory to God. This is one of the things in warfare you got to get in your spirit. Praise God, amen. You cannot allow your desires to override your understanding of your senses. Say it again, bogus. You cannot allow your desires to override your understanding, your senses, your caution button to say, wait a minute, let me check this. I don't know what this is. I just don't eat just anything. Praise the name of, let me listen to this. Let me discern this teaching before I start being influenced by it, before I start following this, before I start giving heed to it. Because these deceiving spirits, these doctrine of demons, these, amen, these things that are taught by demons, amen, have made their way to the pulpit, amen, and so the enemy wants to hijack the pulpit to deceive the people, amen, and lead them away into sin. All demons leave away from God and into sin. All demonic activity leaves us away from God and into sin. All demonic activity leaves away from God, away from his son, away from the Holy Ghost, and into sin. Amen. Praise God. Let me get finished here. Glory to God. Amen. So, um, Amen. Uh, speaking lies in the hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot urn, forbidden to, forbidden to marry, amen, commanded to abstain from food which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Praise God. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. For every creature, God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received 
is thanksgiving. Amen. For it is sanctified by the word of God and by prayer. We'll talk more about that. Amen. On tomorrow. Praise the Lord. Amen. Discern. We got to be able to detect. Amen. To know, to recognize, to understand. Amen. Uh, demonic activity. Amen. The scriptures tells us. Amen. In Luke 8 and Mark, the first chapter. Amen. It's very detailed about the activity. Glory to God. Now, you don't have to walk around all vexed and weird. You don't have to walk around all scary. You don't have to walk around all timid looking. Amen. Your eyes bucked. Why? Because no man goes to war at his own expense. You got to get that in your spirit. But you should have a level of, amen, of boldness. You should have a level of discernment. Amen. You should have a level of confidence of that which you are and who you are in Christ. Demon says in Act 19, of the seven sons of Sceva tried to adjure or to cast out demons, amen, by the Jesus that Paul preached. But that demon recognized he didn't have what Paul had. He said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know, but amen, who are you? Leaped on him, amen, wounded him, left him naked. Glory to God, beat him naked. Amen, that's a beat up, right? That's a serious beat down. Glory to God. But that's what demons, they're offended when you try to confront them and you don't have the Holy Ghost. Praise the name of the Lord. Fasting and prayer will always attract demonic attention because the demons have watched humanity for thousands of years and know what happens when human and God come into covenant and amen in the earth realm they turn over their plates to seek God they always alert the demonic act, amen antennas because they know exactly but beloved I don't want you to be ignorant concerning their devices amen continue to press be not deceived amen by the activity amen don't allow yourself to be led astray don't allow your senses to put you off the mark stand strong stand firm in the justified presence of God and watch the Lord move on your behalf. Glory to God. Amen. We'll continue the matter on this week when we're talking about spiritual warfare. I'm all off the chain. I'm all in the rafters. Glory to God because the, the, I understand, amen, what the Lord is up to. And the real church is going to manifest, amen, and the uh, the, deep, the darkness, the spirits of darkness recognize, amen, what's about to happen. And I'm, amen, I'm all in the rafters because I know, Praise God, the time is right now. It's now. It's not about to. It's not coming. It's not, uh, you know, manifesting. No, we are in a right now time. Glory to God. And the real people of God are manifesting. The radical remnant of, of showing their faith in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. I bless you. I magnify you. I adore you. You alone are God and by yourself. Father, give us discerning, understanding, give us strength, a boldness, a spiritual wisdom, an insight to detect to be able to perceive, know the difference, to make obvious to us, Father, amen, what's happening in the demonic realm. So that we may, amen, serve you, amen, with all of our hearts and with a boldness that only you can give. And we bless you now. We pray for you, give you glory, and Father God is honored.